Hey guys, and welcome to Taylor Tech. Today, we're going to be doing another free NAS video. Um, first, we're going to be upgrading from FreeNAS 9.10 to FreeNAS Corral, which is the recently released version of FreeNAS 10. When I did my previous FreeNAS video, I actually did it with the FreeNAS 10 beta, and I didn't realize I was using a beta. I was not paying close attention as I should have, and I had rolled my server back to 9.10. So um, I'm actually going to be upgrading it now to FreeNAS Corral. And we're also gonna be doing some performance testing for some different types of arrays within FreeNAS. We're gonna hop here into the computer, uh, pull up the FreeNAS server and get started. Okay, first things first, let's upgrade the system. As you can see here, we're on 9.10. Uh, we want to upgrade to FreeNAS Corral. So we're going to go to update and we're going to change our train and go to FreeNAS Corral Stable and tell it yes. Now, before I click yes, it's very important to note, I did do a full backup before doing this. So I'm not risking my data. It's all safely stored on a separate redundant array. So, all right. We changed, check now. Okay. So now we're downloading and updating the packages. Hopefully this will go relatively quick and then we can get on with it. Mm, yeah, it looks like it's gonna take a while. So we'll come back to this once this is done. I can only sit here and stare at a screen for so long. I'm gonna go get a drink. I need a drink. Everybody needs a drink. Let's all have a drink. While we sit here and wait for the installer to actually look like it's progressing, um, Let's talk about a few of the things that I have learned from the FreeNAS community regarding um, the Corral update that you should be aware of if you are planning to uh, upgrade. Uh, first of all, um, a lot of users reported issues with things like cron jobs getting broken um, and you know uh, SMB shares getting broken. So you may have to set some of those things back up. Um, also jails do not migrate so if you're using jails extensively now for uh, any number of purposes they will not migrate and you will have to basically do all of that from scratch again with docker containers um, apparently they are working on a way to migrate those things but um, as of right now they don't uh, since i literally just set this server up in the last two weeks i haven't really done a lot with it i've been busy and on vacation um, so i haven't had the chance to give myself painted in a corner. Do you find it hilarious that I managed to install the beta like <laughs> 10 days before they launched and I was so buggy 10 days before launch that I had to roll back. Uh, I guess they, the nightlies weren't really as close to the actual launch. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Apparently this is, is, is very stable. The alerting works, everything, you know, works pretty well. So we will see. All right, there we go. Let's see. My understanding is it will remember your settings from before. So obviously it remembered my root. Okay. So the server's back up. My shares are still there. My data appears to all be there. I just had to, uh, I haven't updated the security settings, guys. I'm a horrible person. And now you know. All right, good. So let's do one thing before we start changing things. Let's do a crystal disk mark. Um, I did have to go and update pretty much all of my permission settings. My permissions got wiped out. Um, so now that they're all updated, we're gonna test it one more time and go from there. So the crystal disk mark is done and you can see we've got pretty, uh, as you can see, the performance is pretty much as we expected. Um, about 118 megabytes per second for our fastest reads and the writes come in just behind. We're gonna save that guy open and we're going to go ahead and we'll delete the existing share and rebuild it with a new topology. So let's do that. So we're gonna start with the RAID Z1 array. We're gonna build that guy. And um, we'll call this same thing. And once we have this guy built, we're going to get a share up on it and immediately test it. 
So now we are testing a RAID Z1. Okay, so it's done. Uh, and as you can see, our performance is almost exactly the same. We didn't expect a huge difference though. Next, we're going to do a balls out performance. No, whoa. All right, we're gonna go balls out for performance this time. Finally, it's running. Now we're getting a, an array of mirrors. I don't, something, I will say this, it's not perfect. Green ass corral, not perfect. I just went through fuck all to get permissions to actually work. Um, I don't know what it was. It kept resetting my permissions when I would try and set them on the data set and when I would try and set them on the share. And it was like, maybe I wasn't giving it the system enough time to catch up, um, which certainly I could be guilty of. Um, but yeah, now we're finally, finally running. Um, but it doesn't seem to be improving performance at all. A little surprising. I don't think I'm at network max. I mean, 117 megabytes per second. I, I have a gigabit connection. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Uh, so I'm stupid. I'm a horrible person. I'm stupid. I'm at network max. Okay, guys. So <laughs> I got to the uh, part where I was testing performance there and it dawned on me as I was sitting there. These numbers are all the same. And then I started to think, oh my God, I've done something stupid. And yep, sure enough. Yeah. And even at the ZFS RAID Z2 configuration, I was already maxing out my gigabit network port to this computer so short of doing a 10 gig link or you know bonding multiple links together i'm not going to get any better performance on this computer it's possible that i could get better performance on another computer again that had a better network connection um but that would also require improving the network connection on the nas itself because it's only a 10 gig link um or i'm sorry a one gig link i don't have the funds to dump into 10 gig networking because it's expensive so I'm just going to be happy that I'm, uh, I'm maxing out my network. That's, that's pretty decent. I'll take that. Um, so what I'm going to do next is dive into some of the cool stuff I was able to figure out how to do, um, after I raged for a minute about realizing I was an idiot, uh, with FreeNAS Corral, cause there are some very cool things. Um, first it offers quite a few services beyond just sharing services. Like you've got your standard stack of various ways that you can share your data. It has many management services that you have here. So you can uh, do several things. I'm not entirely sure what all of them are because I'm not a sysadmin myself, but the one really cool thing is you can set up your own domain controller. So they use Zintal as their domain controller that they uh, let you just fire off from the, uh, the ZFS or from the FreeNAS interface. And it's really cool because in addition to everything that you can normally do with a domain controller, um, one, of, one of the awesome things you can do is set up your own DNS. So I've got several Internet of Things devices in my house, including the FreeNAS server. And what I can do is I can set up my own domains for them so that I can just go, you know, uh, blue spray, and it'll take me to that device instead of having to memorize the IP. Now, on my part of the helping this is I've actually given these um, assigned IPs so they've got uh, DNA, uh, DHCP reservations set so that they will always, whenever I type in blue spray, I always go to my watering system for my house. And uh, you know, whenever I type, I don't think I have, I don't have one for Zintel yet, but I've got one for FreeNAS. So you can see now I've got, just go to FreeNAS and it takes me to my FreeNAS server and it works on any device in the house. It's awesome. So much better than remembering IPs. Um, so that is an awesome one that I highly recommend, especially if you have a lot of different devices. Um, another one is Docker containers. Now we talked about this previously. There are so many things you can do with Docker containers. Let's look at this real quick. Let's look at their collections. Here's all the stuff that you can just fire off. Um, I think I saw somewhere in here a, uh, yeah, a MySQL Docker container. Um, you know, 
lots of cool stuff um the one that i am playing with right now is plex i don't have it fully set up i literally just got the dang thing um fired up recently um <clears throat> I recently, I, I just recently got the thing fired up. I haven't had the chance to configure it fully other than logging into it. Um, so I, I want to get it set up so that it's using one of the shares as the media um, library for the free NAS server so I can quickly add stuff to it. I, I may back off of that and actually just let it be on the Plex boxes VM. You, in addition to Docker containers and the services, you can actually just fire off the VMs. Now it does create VMs for some of these and you'll notice that these VMs do take up um, system resources. You do lose a CPU core to them and you lose memory to them. So that's why I'm going to say if you're going to run a FreeNAS Corral server and you think you're going to play with it, get as, as high a core count CPU as you can because you're going to want more cores to play with more things. Um, I know most people say Intel, 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 always do Intel. Um, you may actually want to consider like an old FX processor for this because it's the cheapest way to get eight quarters. I think they're like 90 bucks now that um, Zen, the Ryzen is launched. So for 90 bucks, you can get an eight core server um, that, you know, throws 16 gigs of DDR3 in it because DDR3 is cheaper and be off to the races with, you know, as many VMs and whatnot as you want doing lots of cool stuff. Um, be very easy to set up your own web server. Um, you know, just lot, lots of cool things. I can't, like, my mind is like racing with all the stuff that I want to do with this at some point. But anyway, I actually, I really regret my um, 6100 processor, um, that i3, man, the, the four core is just not gonna do it. I don't think I'm gonna have to, <laughs> I hate that. I just bought the processor and I'm probably gonna upgrade it pretty soon. That makes me so sad. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, a very cool feature. And guys, this was so seamless to set up. Seriously, I came to services, management, DC, clicked launch, waited like 10 minutes for it to create the VM, fire the VM up, fire up Zintel, and then clicked open DC GUI and off to the races. Very simple to set up. Same thing with um, the Docker containers. The Docker containers were just as simple. You set up your container, you and it just it fires off real quick and you've got your your container. So again, like I said, I haven't set this thing up. I need to add libraries and do all sorts of things to it. So um, so free NAS Corral is a huge upgrade. I, I haven't run into any of the bugs that other people have talked about. I don't know if I just came 10 days late. So, you know, everybody else had already reported everything and they got fixes out, um, but it's awesome. It's very cool. Um, I highly recommend it as an upgrade to 9.10. I know I'm brand new to free NAS, so my word probably doesn't carry much at this point, but I highly recommend it because it is that much better um, from what I've seen so far, at least, especially the UI. The UI is so much nicer um, and so much easier to work in. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful as I continue my journey with FreeNAS. I've had a lot of fun doing this. I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep digging in. I've got some really cool ideas. Um, the next one being setting up my own dynamic DNS using the free NAS box and AWS Route 53. Um, I've heard it done before. I just need to work out a few of the details. So that's gonna be coming down the road soon. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then go ahead and subscribe for more content like this in the future and hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments for me, please feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. I love interacting with you guys. Um, and finally, if you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by shopping or using the Amazon affiliate link in the description section down below. I really appreciate it when you do that. It really helps me with uh, continuing to improve my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have a good one.